I'm really going to mostly talk about uh, for the 101, just kind of like some kind of entry points. Um, did anybody go to the Hangouts, the, the live stream one they just did before lunch? That was the lips and one. The lips and one. I mean, that's a lot of my stuff is, is based on that too. So I mean, well, I'll, I'll probably go. I, it looked like she was doing some fairly like this is how you do it. Um, yeah, and, and, and she had, like if you saw, I got I'm talking about the same cameras and stuff. So, um, But I'll talk about some other um, options as well and kind of why you want to go one way or another. Um, it's called video podcasting. I feel like that's very limiting. Like we're not putting our stuff on iTunes as much anymore for video. I don't think there's a lot of audience there for it myself. That's my personal preference on that. Um, so it's really just kind of, I, I like, I mean, kind of more think of it video for the web. Like we're talking about YouTube. That's where everybody's, for the most part, doing their video. Um, there are exceptions, but for the most part, we're streaming. So where can I put that? that anybody can stream and now on our TVs and everything. And that's the cool thing too, because uh, when we started this, and for those that don't know me, um, I do Sorgatron Media. Uh, it's kind of, it's my own company and we do a lot of podcasts, all of this stuff. Um, and most of which we record on Tuesday nights, well, Tuesday afternoon in the nights, um, which encompasses uh, about all of these shows here. And then uh, Will in the back does that. That's just audio. Uh, so that's Will. He's a panel right guy. If you like comic books, he's awesome. Uh, great show. Um, <clears throat> highest highest note, of course, is reading every X Men member ever for a forty five minute podcast. Yeah, to celebrate ten episodes. That was awesome. Um, so I started as an audio podcaster because I mean, two thousand six. We didn't have the bandwidth, right? You know, we were on our cable modems and, and everything and, and just kind of discovering this podcasting thing. Um, and then about, geez, 2010, uh, we saw kind of the video podcasting thing happening. I think at the time, what CNET was doing a lot of video casts. And of course, Leo Laporte, a, a, a big influence for me is the uh, This Week in Tech Network, uh, twit.tv, if you want to check that out. Um, and kind of follow suit and said, okay, you know, let's try this. You know, we were doing, uh, our shows are very kind of long form discussion kind of shows, you know, our, our wrestling mayhem show that we started in 2006 could go two hours. <coughs> we're trying to rein it in a little bit. Uh, so when you're doing video, that's a little hard to digest. Um, so if you're, if you're just getting started with the video, that's, and we talked about I kind of uh, jumped in a little bit on the audio path podcast this morning on that idea is what's your audience going to be? Uh, if you're doing video, you will have more success, I believe, if you do short form video. Um, for think about what what you watch on YouTube. Um, typically, what's what's YouTube notorious for? Like you know, kittens and, and people getting kicked in the balls, right? It takes you that, right? Um, it, look at the people that are successful on YouTube, your iJustines, your um, My Drunk Kitchen, uh, Epic Meal Time. Most of those shows uh, are, you know, maybe three minutes is a good, you know, clip a lot of times. Maybe they'll extend to 10 if they're a little longer. SourceFed is another one that I like. Uh, where they, it's a nice three minute, four minute news item, and they just do a bunch of them. One, it's really nice because you have a bunch of things for people to click on, a bunch of, you get more um, um, clicks on it, you get better engagement. <coughs> and we'll talk about that a little bit when we get into YouTube. Um, and, uh, and which hopefully means you get better advertising, right? Versus I'm putting my hour and a half wrestling talking about pro wrestling show on and uh, the numbers aren't there for YouTube for us. It's it's very much as some people access it that way. It's kind of nice because people send me pictures and they say, hey, I'm watching the show on my Chromecast on my 42 inch TV. Here's my big head, you know. Uh, so it, it, it's, it's nice to have that access and have that option for people. But we know our money, our most of the users, the, the most accessible way for us 
is the audio side of things. So a lot of what I'm going to talk about, of course, is going to apply to how we're doing things there. Um, but again, kind of with a mind for that kind of short form, it's probably going to be your best bet. I'm considering that. Um, there is a really good workflow um, uh, with the Hangouts uh, live feed. If you didn't catch that, um, I think it's a really good, it goes really into Google Hangouts, and I am going to talk about it here because there's a lot of stuff that I do. Uh, and I'll show some examples of what we're doing with it. Um, if you're doing a long form video kind of thing, even a short form, if you're doing a 10 minute show, um, consider the audio stuff. So look at the audio podcasting, that idea. Um, and it could be very accessible. I was very surprised. There was a show recently. Um, anybody familiar with Gary Vaynerchuk? He's a, kind of a social media guru. Uh, his books include Crush It. I think it's The New Economy or something like that. I read it. I don't remember the name. And uh, 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 Jab, Jab, Right Hook is the latest one. Um, and I think a lot of my kind of customer service social media cues from him on that. But he recently started doing a Q&A show. And, you know, nice clip together. They're filming on a DSLR, and it's got a really cool look for it. I can actually bring it up real quick. Um, and I'm surprised because it's a very visual thing. Like, they're putting up Twitter questions, and it's him, and they're putting some graphics up and everything. And, and you kind of wonder, you know, um, how does this translate for just audio? And they started putting it out on a podcast. Um, On this episode, I talk about bricks and mortars, I talk about almonds, kids with cash, and some other stuff. You ask questions, and I answer them. This is the Ask Gary So, I mean, this is the high end. This is, um, you know, somebody that has somebody that's editing, they have graphics. He does this, I think, five days a week, and presuming his hectic schedule works out with it. Um, this is kind of your ideal idea. It, it, this is your ideal concept. It's something you can do daily or several times. So more people have a chance to interact with you. More people will find you based on varying topics. Maybe I'll come across this guy because he's talking about telemarketing. Maybe because he's talking about Snapchat, Snapchat payments has been really big in the news. So right off the bat, it's just kind of having that strategy. Now, so you want to get started. Um, and honestly, it doesn't take much these days to get started. Um, like, you know, really, with the advent of Google Hangouts, um, I like Google, Google Hangouts for those, is everybody familiar? Anybody doesn't know what a Google Hangout is here? Okay. Uh, so of course, you know, it's part of Google Plus, um, and it's really tied into YouTube. The nice, so, I'll get more into two and one, but I have a studio. I've pieced all these these uh, a soundboard and multiple computers, and they're all feeding into this Wirecast set, set up, so I can bring people on multiple Skype lines, and each person gets a computer, and uh, I can control the audio here. And, and and I'm sitting in front of I think I counted six or seven monitors when I sit down Tuesday night to do these shows, right? And this is all just you know I'll talk about that later. Now, when I look at the kind of show you can do with a Google Hangout and the tools they've given for it, um, I kind of sometimes wonder why I have a studio, because it's that it's it, it's they're giving you that many options. Um, but the biggest thing is accessibility. For instance, okay, so our typical show. Hey, there's Riz in the back. Um, our typical show looks. Hey guys, so we're trying here. <laughs> And it's in the studio. So we're using Wirecast. I'm live switching. I think in this video, I got Will in the back there. There he is on his webcam. You know, again, you know, using just what we have on hand. Um, but the guys from the Wrestling Mayhem show have taken some of the concepts with Google Hangout, Google Hangout on air, and they're able to play a little bit to the point where they decided to do it. We are live once Here's again. Chris. He's practicing his podcast. The Riz in the back there. He's podcasting. He's practicing his podcasting shots. Is this one of your solo ones? Is Mike on this one? Uh, oh, we could get a Riz.soy no, domain, by the way. 
We'll get you hooked up. There he is. There he is. So this is cool because these guys, they watch uh, NXT Impact Wrestling on Thursday nights. I've dedicated myself for my own sanity and for my wife's sanity to only do my podcasting on Tuesday nights. So I'm not going to expand to do that myself personally. But our network of people, you got Riz, uh, who's here in Pittsburgh. The other guy, uh, Mad Mike, is up in Poughkeepsie, New York. He was a guy who just, I hate when he wears white beaters on the show. Um, but uh, now we have this access accessibility, and we can do these extra shows, um, which is nice because then, again, that workflow um, was talked about in the other session. You can We can take this. And you go into YouTube, and you can download this file. I just convert it to MP3, kick it out on the on the stream. Now I got something in iTunes, I got something in Stitcher, I got something everywhere else. And these do surprisingly well. Um, and it's something we wouldn't start, we wouldn't have done with the full assets of, of what we're doing in the studio. Um, to the point where, like, I'm, I'm surprised. Like, I mean, this, this is them talking for a half an hour. It's just like two heads talking for half an hour. And we get like 500 hits. It like defies all the logic I have for making a good video on YouTube, right? Um, but they sometimes they hit and they get get on a wave and, and we do good. So it's worth us to keep doing. Um, they've expanded. These guys also get together and now they do a game show that they've been putting together. A rest, pro wrestling trivia game show. Um, not that, I don't think it's taken off numbers or a while, but it's just too good a concept to pass up and they're having fun with it. And uh, I'm hoping to kind of push it through and uh, we can make something out of that, too. They're starting to do mystery science theater stuff because everybody has WWE Network for ten for nine ninety nine, uh, <laughs> And so we all have accessibility to all these old pay-per-views. So they're sitting, you know, and most of the big wrestling fans, they're paying their 10 bucks and they're, they have access to all this, too. At least in our audience, we find. So they're saying they have these watch parties where they're going to sit there and you know, do their mystery science theater and discussion over it, and watch, if you can sync it up and watch it together. Um, again, these guys are just using, well, my grace, this is a, this is your laptop? That's my laptop. That's your laptop. Mike's on, I Mike's think, a laptop on. camera as well. He just yeah. upgraded. Um, and, you know, he's got his headset. We're not, you know, we don't have the money to give everybody really nice headsets, really nice cameras. But you can get started, and and that's one thing I, I really push with the hangout is anybody can, everybody's got a camera at this point it seems. You got it on your phone, you have it on your laptop. Can you even get a laptop without a webcam anymore? Like I, like the Chromebooks have them. Like there, there's a lens on you somewhere if you're on a computer, typically desktop, I guess. Um, so you can just jump in and get started, even. Point. We've also done a couple of things with our clients. Um, this is a client I have on Mondays. Um, we played with ideas for videos. Uh, we have some stuff on here or lower where, like, we brought in the cameras and the lights. And we did some big production videos, them talking about their services and their events. Uh, this is uh, Seclair Behavioral Therapy. They're a uh, uh, behavioral therapy, and they deal a lot with uh, addiction, uh, suboxone treatments, psychology, but they also, they're very much into, you know, kind of, it's not just the treatment, it's you got to take care of yourself, so we have nutritionists, yoga, uh, Reiki, stuff like that, and they're trying to do, you know, a full around thing. So this is a series we started uh, over a year ago called the Educational Grand Rounds, and the big thing was, what can we do weekly without me dragging half of my studio in here, right? And we have a computer in their group room that was set up. We have PA students coming in all the time. And, uh, and, 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 and we just needed something simple. Something that we could just set up a camera and do something simple. For these guys, I get a little hardware here. Um, again, kind of echoing the, the session before, probably the best thing for your money to get is this, the C910 uh, Logitech webcam C910. Uh, I've seen it retail, I think around 80 bucks. That seems about right, 80-ish. Yeah. Um, I think Amazon usually has the best price on it. Um, it's really nice. Again, it has echoed. You can put uh, this on a nice tripod like I have in the back, um, which I, myself, and you'll see them on some of the laptops around here, since I'm on a little bit of a, I'm doing podcast myself budget, 
I suppose to my clients, if, and if you're like, well, yeah, 80, 90 bucks is a little steep for you. Um, this is a nice alternative. It's a, a 270. I think I saw on this site, it, on Logitech, it's retailing for, yeah, 40 bucks. I think I found it for 30, maybe a little bit less on Amazon when I found it. Only thing is paying the butt for this, it doesn't have that tripod mount. So I have to like wrap it around and do, do something funky to make sure it, it's on there. But it was, I just needed something that was a little easier. Um, we had, we were taking all those cameras and trying to firewire them in and, and use like the pro cameras. And it just with, it's just easier to have something that's USB, that's a nice quality. Um, another good option if you're into a little higher budget, look at some Cisco cameras. I know you know them for networking stuff, um, but uh, it, there's been some really nice quality. I know um, Alex Lindsay with um, uh, Pixel Cords and uh, uh, uses it, and, and they've, they've had some really nice quality off of that as well. Um, But we grabbed this guy, and we also grabbed the focal picture, because I like how this mic looks. Uh, the blue snowball, this thing's a pain in the butt, because every time I try, try to put it on the, the stand, it'll roll off the table, because <laughs> uh, it's, it's just a ball. It, it's, a, it's a ball. But again, it's really nice, not getting into mics, because I figure that's more of an audio podcasting kind of thing. Um, but again, everything that applies to audio podcasting applies here, as far as if you're, your mics and everything. Because um, um, no matter what you're doing with video, if you don't have good audio, just throw it away. If, if you're not getting good audio because you're concentrating too much on the video, and that's happened to me too, because I'm concentrating, let's get some good video and stuff, and then the audio podcast suffers, and I have a bad couple of weeks there or something, because I'm missing that, because I'm worried about, am I switching stuff? Does it look good? What are these graphics doing? Um, but if you're not, if you're not signing that ground floor with people's ears, it's it's just not going to work. Um, unless, like, put music to it or something. I don't know. Um, but for what we're doing for conversation, um, just, you gotta, you gotta have the audio down. I would almost recommend, especially if you're doing kind of a long-form discussion kind of thing, start with an audio podcast. It's easier. You've got less things to worry about. It's a smaller file. Um, get that down. Maybe do a version of what you want to do in that audio form. And even if it's a short thing, it could be a 10-minute thing. Um, there's, there's podcasts that are like three minutes that are out there that people do as like a daily kind of thing. That's fine. Um, but definitely get that down. So we got the blue microphone. We got the um, C10 Logitech for these guys. Um, the problem is we have their computer. And we got a great connection. I, I looked it up. They got like Comcast Business. I clocked this thing on uh, speed test on that. If you're, oh, here's the other thing. Um, I don't know if it's discussed before. Make sure you have a very good connection for Google Hangouts. Because the one thing, nice thing about it is it's recording out there. You're not record, you don't have to worry about the CPU of your computer, the speed of your hard drive. You're recording whatever Google is receiving from you, whatever was broadcasting to you, uh, whatever quality of these broadcasters are using Google Hangouts today, actually. As long as that, if, if you logged in and you love how that looks, because you, you know you have a full connection at 720p and everything, that's what you're going to get. Um, and I'll get in a little bit more of that in the 201, why that's important. So, so we have these guys, we can set up something really quick, I can go put my camera on the table, a microphone in front of them, and it gets them started, and they don't have to worry about too much. And again, with Google Hangout, it's really nice. Oh, greetings. And sometimes I have trouble viewing him. He's, been getting, he's actually been getting really good as a host. I uh, have a lot of fun with it. After, after about like 40 times doing this, you kind of get the hang of it, right? Talking in front of the camera. And like I said, there's students we get to have on, and they can have get them involved in the discussion as well. This is another uh, psychiatrist that's there. Um, so we get to uh, put some faces to people. Um, and we have a whole series of, uh, talking about, we, we just did a series on 12-step recovery. We talked with uh, Nancy Fitzgerald up here about um, uh, kind of a, a religious and mindfulness kind of thing that she's doing up in New Hampshire. Um, and and this, uh, the, the A Course in Miracles, which I guess is a... Uh, 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 some kind of uh, uh, study and, and everything. But again, we're able to bring them in nice and easy. This is when I'm there. So I'm able to do some stuff, make sure you know she's going to look okay as well as we can. 
Um, we a lot of times dip in quality because we got the good camera, got the good connection. They have a AMD Tri-Core Windows 7 machine sitting there and we can't process all of the video very well. So you'll see these little dips in quality. They'll get really grainy. And there's not much we can do about it right now. Um, if you want the best quality for Google Hangout, um, they recommend four logical cores. So um, that can get sketchy. I know CPUs are not as clear as they used to be 10 years ago. Um, but generally, if you 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 want to aim for at least having, uh, if you're looking for a computer, an Intel i5, i7. Um, I don't know what the AMD equivalents are, um, but if you can see in the specs, cores, and they say logical cores. So if you've ever hit Control, Delete, and pulled up uh, your system CPU, like does it when you look at the CPU graph, is it showing four different graphs? Because that's each core in your CPU. Maybe get a little too old on there. But that's the kind of thing you need to look for. Um, and I think Activity Monitor on, on the Mac does the same. Um, so that that's what you need to get. I want to broadcast HD. I have this nice Logitech $90 camera, and I want to make sure everything goes out to that extent. So you're making video. Even Aside from that, even if you're... Oh, this is the other side of the thing as far as the, well, we want to make things dead simple so they're at least making videos. These videos suck. I completely admit it. But we got the conversations. Somebody there, I can train their not so technically literate staff to go over to the computer, set up that mic, set up that camera, and um, you know log into Google. And I got their account connected and everything, so that makes it a little easier. You know, kind of burst them a little bit in Google Plus, and they have these psych, psych, psychiatric grand rounds, where they have somebody come in physically, and they have they invite people to come in, and um, what's this one? Let's see. You know, we're talking about the role of integrative medicine here. Um, is anybody else significant on here? Um, but but really good practitioners from like around the area that come in and have full discussions with it. Uh, again, doesn't look too hot, but we capture it. And that's, can we oh, capture these conversations and do something with it? Um, and that's, why I like, that's also why I like the snowball. Um, again, like yes, the Yeti, um, as, as we talked about in the previous session. Um, you have a setting on it for, uh, you know, the cardio, I'm not getting into the cardio and everything, but basically, am I talking to somebody directly in front of me? Is the microphone in front of me and I, I need a nice, clear connection here? Or can I pick up the whole room? Is it doing a 360? And that's what we're doing here. So we, we just have a room full of people. We just need to kind of mic it and get it going. And you see it looks chunky again, that kind of problem with the computer and everything. And those are just too many windows that I've always had a problem with, too. Even when I got a pro camera, it's, it's, it's just so tough. And they don't even have like real blinds or anything, so we get stuck with that. So, kind of the point on that is, is just like if, if you have a webcam, if you have a mic, hell, if you have your computer with your webcam and you got the nice little earbuds that came with your iPhone, you can get started with video. Uh, and and as I say, just taking that first step before you put the money into it, before you buy the blue microphone, before you buy the $90 camera and everything. I want to touch on a couple other uh, kind of access points here too. So, especially with YouTube. So, um, you know, obviously, I think any computer you're going to get right now comes with a video editor. Uh, Windows comes with Windows Movie Maker. I haven't seen it in a few versions. I imagine it's only gotten more capable to a certain point. Um, and of course, iMovie. Uh, recently, and if you guys have Netflix, I, I recommend this, especially if you want to kind of look at a video on the web. Uh, there was a documentary called Please Subscribe, if I have that title right. It is about YouTubers. It is about, you know, people getting the hits and making money from YouTube. Um, and uh, and you, you, you look in it. Uh, there's one guy that's doing some special effects and stuff, and he's in like, Final Cut. It's not even the new Final Cut. It's like the old Final Cut, you know, that you had to buy in a box, right? Uh, but most of the more successful ones are just using iMovie. You don't need to learn 
this $300 program or Adobe Premiere, you can get started with iMovie. iMovie is, I think, as a professional video editor, um, very powerful. I've, I've started digging around it after uh, a couple years ago uh, for a client, and uh, and uh, it, it, it's it, there's a lot of stuff under the hood uh, as far as um, um, like I was surprised at some of the audio uh, selections in there about like you know playing with the uh, 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 like color and audio and um, you got to dig into it a little bit uh, and it is a different way of thinking of things. Um, that's why I think as an aside, I think it's why most people had problems when they made a new Final Cut because all of the video editors have been doing this for ever, um, didn't want to start thinking a different way. But again, if you started with iMovie, it, it's, 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 I think it's better for people that aren't already video editors. Um, so definitely dig into that. And there's a lot of tutorials. Just search on YouTube. Um, if you want to really get deep dive into a tool, subscribe to uh, lynda.com, L-Y-N-D-A.com. Uh, they have some awesome stuff. We used to subscribe to it to learn new programs um, at my old job. Um, whenever we needed to move to, you know, learning Adobe Motion or something, uh, to, to I was trying to figure out how to take logos off of people's hard hats because we wanted to use it for a different company, uh, you know, stuff like that. Uh, so, and, and they have everything down to, I think they even have podcasting courses in there, that they, you know, like right down to that. And you can just subscribe for like maybe a month or something, take a deep dive into iMovie if you're really dedicated to it, or uh, they might have Windows Movie Maker, I, I suppose, too, if you have that. Um, but even, you don't even know, if you're already, one, if you're already making Hangouts on, on air, you're already in your YouTube account, right? YouTube has a very, 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 I will stress, rudimentary video editor. Um, if you hit upload, you usually get to the screen. Usually you pop your video in there, you don't think about it, right? But, and I'm not sure if there's really a kind of easy way to get to this otherwise. But you see, we got a few options over here. If you just want to like set up your webcam, and I want to talk into the camera for a little bit, you can just hit record. It's going to find your webcam. It's going to load up uh, whatever Flash or HTML5 they're using now to do that. And um, um, and, and you're already, you know, even before there were Hangouts, you could just get your video into YouTube. Um, and of course, they've got Hangouts on air as an option here. But then you have this video editor. So I can go in here, and I'm in the Podcamp Pittsburgh account. Here's a here's when I was just testing the uh, Hangouts just to make sure all the computers were working at different stages uh, the other day. And you have very basic editing tools. So I can crop this down. Say if you just did the webcam thing, or you did the Hangout thing, or maybe you did the Hangout and something failed in the middle, and you had to start a new Hangout to the conversation for whatever reason. You can at least kind of pull those together into <coughs> you can at least like bring those couple of clips together and get in here and bring them together and just make some little edits. Okay, this is test number two. And they have some again, some quick pictures, auto fix, brightness, contrast, slow motion, uh, stabilize. Even if you uh, you took your iPhone and you filmed all you filmed some video, my dog's barking. Hello, guys. I can get I can cameo in my uh, session. Um, and even as far as getting the, uh, uh, the video onto it, uh, you know, again, if you have an iPhone, like you're ready to go. Like how many documentaries and everything are made on this? Um, so, and, and it's probably going to be a little bit better quality than your webcam. Uh, I would just say, I'm not to really diss Android across the board. I haven't been impressed with a lot of cameras. I know there are some good Android cameras out there. So, uh, you do your research. Um, but generally, if it's like, I want to carry a camera that can do some pretty amazing stuff. If you're doing it, like, I, I, I'm to the point where I kind of want to grab my, uh, when we do upgrades, grab the 4S's my in-laws have just to carry around as HD cameras, you know, because they do good 720p stuff. And you can get all kinds of, somebody's walking around, walking around with the, that, that's like a stabilizer, right? Right. For your iPad. Yeah. And the new iPads are doing incredible video. Um, instead of having to look at, like, you know, I have 
that's a fifteen hundred dollar camera. Or they got a three thousand dollar one in the in the main room, you know, and that's what we're doing for our productions. But to get started, this this is this is fine, you know. As long as I delete all of my, you know, uh, WWE Supercar and Angry Birds, and I got a rim on it, I'm good to go. Uh, and uh, and and the, you have YouTube capture on here, and again, it has some of these to get you started. Um, sometimes the stabilized video screws me up, uh, so watch what you're doing there because it, it auto does it. And sometimes I'll make something in iMovie on here. You can add it on your phone. How incredible is that? <laughs> I can do iMovie on my phone. It's ridiculous. And for some people, that's maybe all you need. Um, one for iPad. iPad. The iPad iMovie I think is supposed to be pretty. Um, I, I still have an iPad one, so I, have, I haven't really been able to jump into some of the newer tools. Um, but, but there's supposed to be a lot of uh, extra stuff in that version of it. So, um, so obviously, YouTube really kind of gives you a foot in the door to get started. And it's really, I just recommend just like, there's a, I think there's a uh, creating content that doesn't suck that I think is tomorrow morning. Um, if you're not a person who... Maybe it feels comfortable. Even if you feel perfectly comfortable in front of a camera, go take a video of yourself and see how comfortable you think you looked afterwards. Because that's that's important. Um, just do it, even if you don't put it out there. There's a ten rule, uh, ten podcast rule that we uh, established for Will in Audio Podcasting 101. Make ten videos. There's a guy, uh, Andy Anaco. He's a great writer for the Chicago Sun Times. I listen to. Uh, a couple podcasts he's on, Anako Almanac, really awesome, especially if you like comic books, Will. Um, and uh, he's a, often a contributor on Mac Break Weekly. Um, he is a guy that said, okay, I do writing, I do these podcasts, some are audio, some are video, and I set up the stuff, and somebody else takes care of the video part. Um, but I wanted to, but, I, but he said, I hate doing video. So he set a challenge for himself to use some of these tools and he has a setup already so he's recording to his to his uh, computer already because he's broadcasting everything right um, to do I think he set himself a goal of three videos a week I think it's Monday Wednesday Friday uh, to talk about whatever topics you know he has tech stuff he's in again comic books photography is a big thing with him as well um, highly recommend if you're into any of those three topics to go check them out um, don't ask me to spell his name uh, <laughs> But um, Google will correct you. That's what Google is for. Uh, but it gets you started, you know. I kind of have that goal, you know. Uh, can I do a thing where I talk for five minutes every day about, I've actually got this thing in my head that I, I wanted to do kind of, because I want to do short form video, because again, I have all this long form stuff, right. And again, I'm kind of playing with the podcast. And I had this idea of maybe I'll do a short term video that'll be, uh, and this is like seriously an idea I just came up with last night. I'll do a short-term show where I talk about X, Y, and Z, and maybe we'll be talking about the other cast we do, and there'll be a recap where I talk about news or something, and, and kind of to see where that goes from there. And then, but, you know, can I do that four days a week? Can I take the time, the chunk? That's the other thing. you got to think about, like, again, talked about with the audio podcasting. <laughs> While audio podcasting probably takes about, uh, what do you think about, like, two, three times, whatever it was for whatever your final product is. So you want 45 minutes. You say it takes like three hours finally after everything between prep and then that and then editing. I know we've streamlined things a lot for what we do on Tuesdays. Um, it still takes me most of Wednesday though. Um, you know, video editing, if you're really going to get in there and do a lot of, I'm going to clip it up. I'm going to be the, you know, the YouTube style where it seems like they've cut out every pause. So it's really kind of jumbled together. That's going to take time. I thought about doing this, and then I'm like, I don't want to sit there and do that, you know. Um, but you know, can you fit that into your life? For one thing, any of these, any of these productions, can I fit this into my life? Um, can I can I say I'm going to take Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, which means I'm going to take Sunday night, Tuesday night, Thursday night to work on that video, and nothing else gets in the way. And again, taking that time to say, do I even look good in front of a video? You need practice, you know. I hate the sound of my own voice. And people say, oh, you do it kind of okay, and you know, whatever. And I'm like, 
it's because I've been doing it for years, you know. Um, I still hang out, so I think I sound like an idiot right now. Um, but, <laughs> but I, I can do this. Um, but there's a really, I think with anything, you should listen back, audio or video, and just kind of see how you're coming off. Like, um, if you listen back to your, your, your podcast, video, audio, whatever, you're going to notice little things that annoy you when other people do it, that you didn't know you did, for one thing. And have a little bit of awareness. Um, this is all about self-awareness, especially if you're doing video. Like, I have some, I have some people that are doing these, and I have to keep talking. I'm like, don't put your hands in front of your face, you know, while you're talking on a Google Hangouts. All right, real quick, I need to get to some of uh, the more technical stuff. I do have to bust out of here in probably 10 minutes, because I'm the guy that switches all the tapes. So, <laughs> all right. Um, you're very broadly YouTube. I think YouTube is your go-to thing. YouTube is the place for you to get started. Um, but there's other concerns that maybe you don't want to use YouTube for something. Um, there are options. Um, if you are concerned about copyrights, if you're concerned about people's rights to use the stuff that you make, um, YouTube has a, I don't even understand half of the YouTube license. I put all my stuff Creative Commons, so it's not concerned. Um, but the standard YouTube license gives them rights to do whatever. Um, I think like when you see a YouTube video on, uh, I don't know, Jimmy Kimmel or something, they have whatever connection that they're allowed to do that and they can use your video and they just use it on Jimmy Kimmel and you don't get any compensation. And if you have a problem with that, don't use YouTube. Um, and there's other concerns as well. Basically, if you're concerned about somebody else using your stuff the way you don't want it to be used, you should probably look at another option. Um, one of those options is Vimeo. I was sitting here trying to figure out the name because it sounds like everything else on the internet these days. Vivo, Vivo with an I and then but that's here in Pittsburgh and Vivo, that's the music videos with the E. Uh, but Vimeo is typically when I see somebody doing like a independent movie production, this is where they get involved. So, um, but again, not as easy 101 price of entry. Obviously, you're starting, uh, you got a lower end, but it's, you know, again, you're now you're talking about, okay, what size are my files? Am I doing a short one? If I'm not doing an hour show, that's again, I'm, I'm converting my like, like hour long discussion shows. This isn't even an option for me because they're just way too big of files when you get HD files and put them up there. Uh, but again, thankfully, I'm not concerned about uh, myself, the, uh, the stats. Um, represent Pittsburgh, Lipson, uh, they have video um, options as well. Again, I mean, you, you have the concern with, you know, how much video am I putting up every month? Um, and I don't think these do, guys do it, but I think Vimeo might be this. I think it's this one I was looking at. Um, some places you go, notice we, this is podbean.com. I, I, they have some video options as well, but you see it's like 18 bucks a month. You have an eighteen dollar a month idea, you know. <laughs> you have that 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 budget to be able to jump into it, and that's a consideration too. Am I just experimenting, or is this a business thing? For one thing, do we have a budget to say, okay, we're gonna go by, like whenever I, for me to experiment. You know, we talked about whenever I do an audio show, I put it on YouTube, I put it on talk shoot, uh, because I don't know if I, it's a money making thing, it's a hobby thing, it's an experimental thing that will hopefully turn into some other work, which most of my podcasts thankfully do. Um, but for a client uh, that has at least some kind of running budget, the podcast goes on Lips and Pro. The, the video cast, well, they're still using YouTube because they don't have any concerns with it, but if it was somebody that was concerned about their copyrights and, and that control and how it looks, and YouTube putting a dot soy ad in front of my, my, my important video where I'm putting my message out, then yeah, you want to consider one of one of these. Um, more, more so the Vimeo. Um, the reason I wanted to bring up more Podbean and Libsyn, um, video podcasting means I put my video show on iTunes. Um, again, I feel like people aren't doing that. There may be some exceptions. I had a guy that was trying to download my awesome cast show that's an hour long in HD 
onto his iPod Nano, and we had a discussion about what co what uh, 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 compressions I was using to try to get that to work, and I'm just like, man, you're probably the only guy doing that. I might be mistaken, but I'm pretty sure not a lot of people are going and downloading those shows to that. Again, we're kind of in a streaming culture. We have ample bandwidth as long as the FCC doesn't screw us up and Comcast, uh, but I won't get into that. Um, and we should be good for a while. But um, but if you do want to get into that, if you do want to have that RSS feed and stuff, look at Libsyn, look at this Podbean, um, and they'll probably, I think, I know a lot of shows I come across have like a nice landing page on Podbean as well. Of course, Libsyn has, has some great branding stuff too. Um, I think that touches base on most of my 101-ish stuff. Um, I, I really, again, kind of glossing over a lot of things, uh, just the, some, some good entry points for you guys. We have a couple minutes. Yeah, question? Yeah. Uh, is it worth uploading um, like a static picture to the podcast? Have yes. Oh, yes. If you have the opportunity, uh, there's something called the YouTube, YouTube School. You, you, I might know the name of it. Oh, YouTube. It's like a YouTube school thing. And all of those people that are down in L.A. Uh, doing videos in their studio and being awesome YouTube people, um, they, like, Justine, Pittsburgh, I, Justine, Pittsburgh Original, actually is a part of them, too. Um, but they talk about a lot of that kind of stuff. Um, because especially, notice when we went to our supplier page, I still have it up there, um, you know, I, I said we had problems with the video. Notice the pictures. These are pictures I take, typically, right? So then something nice, something that pops over on the Wrestling Mayhem show, again, it's a lot of talking heads. How exciting is that going to be, right? But I put my album art in there. I put, we're talking about Raw, we're talking about the TNA stuff. I put that. They started talking about old pay-per-views. I throw the artwork in from that. Um, I don't know if we're listening to that much. It, it pops. It just, it just sticks out when you're in your ads on the side, you know, um, and it's because otherwise, you know, you've been in there, you've probably been in there, right? You get like three choices. Yeah. Like, uh, here's something from, here's something from 33% of your video, here's something from 50%, here's something from 75% maybe, um, and that's it. And if you're like, it's like me with my eyes closed going like this, you know, that's, what, what's that? Who's going to click on that, you know, yeah. doing whatever you're doing, or it's like the <laughs> middle of a transition or something. This way you can control, even if you just take a still, from your video? I, my question is, if we have a podcast and it's audio on, but okay. we don't have, and there's no video, is it worth it to put it to, you know, go in the premiere, take a static, last static image of, you know, just whatever, whatever works, and then post that on YouTube also so you can listen to audio on? Yeah! You can actually do that right here. Um, this is funny, because actually I, I have an audio shows on Spreaker. Super glad Jimmy Slow gets through a really quick thing there. Because um, I, I, it makes it searchable. Because this is something we did in 2009 before we even did video. Crazy. Lighter I got in there. Um, but now, you're not going to find that in my podcast feed, right? Who's going to go back and find, discover this Jimmy Snooker interview we did that's really awesome and weird uh, back in 2009? But now I'm sticking on YouTube where everybody's looking for wrestling stuff. Uh, and now they're going to find a whole lot of people, but I mean, still, um, it, it's, it's another option. It's another access point. You know, maybe somebody's looking for Super Fly Jimmy Snook, and now they found my show. And now maybe they'll subscribe to the show, because we say subscribe everywhere. Um, and, and now they're, it's another access point. But certainly, I think, I think, certainly put your audio podcast on YouTube. Um, just like if you're already, you should already be making a podcast show graphic, right? For whenever, wherever you're posting it, right? Like those all those ones I had. Um, just put that as your video. I, uh, I know it stinks because then you're sitting there rendering out a, a HD 720 video because you want it to look good when it pops up here, uh, and now you have this giant video that's really just audio. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's a pain in the butt. Yeah, yeah. You don't have like a you don't have a pretty big you know uh, machine doing it. Cause I was doing it for a while on like an older 2009 MacBook. And I'm just like this is not the time for me to do this. <laughs> you do have the stabilization or noise and it's exactly. Well, 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 ideally you're doing um your your, your audio is already done. You're not doing any you're not doing anything on that. 
I think I have a little bit of motion. You can't see here, but I think there's a little bit of motion in this background here. So now I had to get render the 15 minutes of that. You know, or maybe we talked to we talked to nasty boys Jerry Sags about breaking into uh, uh, Graceland, and that was like a 45 minute podcast. So then I got to render out this 45 minute thing of something I'm trying to make look good because I'm using some kind of generator in Final Cut. You know, and maybe I move stuff, or maybe I, I want it to kind of like say a website or say hey subscribe, and I have something cycling. Yeah, it's gonna render all that stuff. You know, and it's, again, it's kind of like that that you know your time versus you know is it worth it for for that? You know, like every time I look at a new platform, it's like okay, there's another point to make a find. You know, I, it, people can find me on YouTube, and that's why we start with video, and then I just you know retroactively make that the audio show for all those people that have been listening the entire time. So it's just another place where people find us, because everybody's on YouTube. So why not, you know? Um, yeah, you can shoehorn like what you're already doing with audio in there somehow, or even just do like an extra thing on the side, you know, stick it in there. So we can go, oh, yeah. Oh, no, I have another one. I don't know, it's, it's going off the trail, another thing, but I want to get some more questions. Um, that loose my bottle. Do you see? The one I keep dropping? Don't tell my employer. Uh, what? The one I keep dropping, don't tell my employer. Okay, that one that you keep dropping and don't tell your employer. Um, I had shopped around for the old, your one, the one with the big stand and everything that was going for like 150 The Yeti one? Yes. Yes. Also recommend, also really awesome. Norm, Norm Peel's been had one. He recorded some old evening with podcasts with it. I, I really dug it, especially for interviews, because you can, well, there's that one saying where, you, like, both sides. Yeah. Right? Uh, that's, that's really cool. There's this way out at price range, and yeah. I like that one. Solutions are USB yeah. connections, and you're not dealing with XLR mics or anything like that. Although, I think Yeti, Yeti might have an XLR has version. Both. Um, so, that's a I don't want to deal with all our stuff. I want a microphone and plug it straight into my thing. I don't know about any driver issues. Um, uh, everybody I've seen. Yes. There are options. The session on, on the PodCamp YouTube uh, about doing podcasting exclusively on your iPad. That was so right. good. Yeah. yeah, that was a really good yeah. session. I'm sure a lot of that stuff, I mean, there's obviously updated the, stuff. But. They had the dongle that one. Yeah, they had one of these at yeah. that, and it was still the Yeti, without this, the Yeti was crashing. I was wondering. The Yeti requires... More power than the iPad yeah. to put out. Oh, he's, yeah, he's, he's the guy you need to talk to. Yeah, right, because yeah. I'm using actually his app to do yeah. it, yeah. but I need to. Yes, I need to, to find something to go in between this and yeah, the mic. Yeah, Technic Eddie, Sierra 21 Company is a really good option. Uh, okay. It's around 50 bucks. I showed it in the last session. Because I think I want to record the video on this and use the mic during the. Mm -hmm. Cooking show I always kind of stream it that way. And this is always the, I'm really big on redundancy, and I'll we'll probably talk about that a little bit in the 201. Um, I always worry about making video on the iPad and audio because, like, I want to monitor it, you know, because I don't want to record this awesome interview with this, this guy I ran into at the WrestleCon, you know, and, and it's like, this is going to be great. I'm talking to my hero, and the audio didn't work, you know, for whatever so reason. That Bosch I, truck, you can monitor. The Bosch truck has a monitor, right? Sonic, you can monitor as long as you're not using the ATR. <laughs> See now then, we get now we get into some, yeah. some deeper stuff here, and it's like what what what, what works for us. I'm trying to really shy away from using. In the past, I used um, a Kodak a Kodak PlaySport to record all my shows on. Yeah. And then it was download that onto the computer, then take it into iMovie. Mm -hmm. And you want that's the other thing is like finding that streamline, and you want the video too, like like. Like I, I specifically for a little bit was making videos on my phone because I'm like, okay, I've been using this high-end stuff because that's what I'm used to because I had the job and everything. What, like I wanted to know what people can do on iMovie, on a phone. So I took my iPhone and I'm recording these little things just like me or going to do this or my wife did color me rad for the, the cool race and I just did a little video on that, you know, just to see how it looked and then I'll like pull it up on my Chromecast and, you know, 
how does that stack up, you know, if you're doing certain things? Um, and then of course, there's a lot of things you can modify too. You can get uh, uh, the Ali Ubi, uh, I think it was called, is this nice battering looking thing you put your phone in and you can hold it and, and it's nice. And there's just a lot of add ons. I think I like that. And the thing she's there's got with the, the one iPad. for uh, what is that? It's called the Padcaster. Pad That's Caster. actually what I was just yeah. going to bring up the new yeah. pad, the pad I know them personally. Awesome. They're great. They're wonderful people. This also, this rubber insert pops out. So it's a cage for your uh, digital camera. And then all these little holes here, you can put your lights, your microphone. Yeah. Like all those kinds of right. options that just turn your, like, I mean, and some of them get expensive. So then you're like, well, at a certain point, why don't There's I just it. get a pro Is camera? Is that an attachment on the nut for the tripod? This one, be, uh, yeah, right yeah. here. Yeah. That's, I follow it on so Twitter. It's it crazy. Just, it just I enables so, so much badly. stuff. <laughs> yeah. And, and it, you know, I, I've looked at teleprompters with iPads and stuff. Like what we did the Unsung show uh, for two and a half years at Pittsburgh Foundation. Like, I just got a Telepomp Plus and put it on my iPad 1, and I got a Gorilla mount and just stuck it under my camera. Like it, it's really awesome if you get into that, like, making, like, how, how much you can make a movie with parts with an iPad, script script organizations. Like, oh, God, when we worked on braces, I wish we had iPads with script organizations. We were having papers all over that coffee shop, and it was just <laughs> ridiculous, and, and, and version tracking and everything, and it was just nuts. All right. I really got to run and go change all the tapes. Uh, so if you guys want to ask them about microphones, it's an awesome yeah. time. <laughs> <laughs>